so our, yeah, our audio is fine. Cool. Mm -hmm. Do you want to intro or do you want me to do it? Uh, you can, and then I'll just kick straight into Gen Con because that's topical. Okay. <clears throat> hey, everybody. Welcome back to Subclass Podcast, brought okay. to you by Cheerios. And Smuckers. <laughs> Cheerios is not our sponsor. And they're, but they're good for your heart, and they come in a honey nut variety. Why are they good for your heart? It's Cheerios. Uh, that's actually a really good question, because aren't they, like, just fucking... It's just carbs. It's, isn't it, like, wheat-based? It Yeah, a yeah. fucking bread. Go eat some bread. Is that good for your heart? It's like croutons and milk. I just want to let everybody know that all of these episodes of the subclass podcast not only are not sponsored, but YouTube they're also not funny. They're, they're not funny, but YouTube also hates them, mm -hmm. and they all get limited ads just for you guys. Do you want to request some reviews? <laughs> I already did request reviews oh. on the past three episodes, and oh. I got emails back saying no. Oh, <laughs> just yeah. no, dude. We watched the whole thing, and you guys are fucking we, nasty. We saw that it was a podcast. <laughs> mm -mm. Just right away, no. Personal it's, stories are not welcome here. So big shout out to YouTube. Um, uh oh, yeah, big right. shout out to YouTube. Uh, oh, has, and um, uh, we are using a little bit of a new setup today because we had mm -hmm. had some problems with some syncing issues last episode, as you guys were aware. We are now just using the stream setup and using OBS with one of the stream cameras. Uh, so we may be a little bit laggier, but now Logan doesn't have to edit all of it together. <laughs> Yay! I just uh, I won't even have to render it. If well, yeah, I would. If, if we screw up. So we'll you, try to do you, that a little less. I mean, you just have to edit out a little bit. So if we, yeah. if we don't screw up, we'll, you don't this have to render it. will be easy as fuck. We can just upload it, like, right away. Amazing. Um, so yeah. last uh, week, uh, you went to Gen Con. I sure did go to Gen Con. Or I, I guess this weekend. I got back this week. Well, technically, when this goes up, it was last week. No, this, this goes up kind of randomly. It's when I have time to <laughs> render it because I'm <laughs> working on other consistent. videos. Not, not really. It's fine. It's all good. I, I, I figured it's You have other it's important huge. shit to do. We all do, man. Yeah. Because we're super famous YouTubers. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's Gen Con was awesome. Absolutely amazing. Super fun experience. Got to meet a lot of people. Got to m hang out and uh, drink and play games. And that's Gen Con. Gen Con is drinking and playing games and mm. seeing other nerds and spending a lot of money that's gen con and it's so much fun that sounds really awesome i got to hang out with the guys with saver dice um that's cody and dave and uh they probably don't guy know. Uh, what, how to be a great gm taking go. 20 um nerdarchy and oh i saw ted too i got to hang out with ted from, from ted talk from ted talks oh ted from ted talks oh, cool it was so cool he was so nice that's awesome he did try to like do a whole speech at me and i was like mm. no dude and mm. i had to walk away mm -mm. but he pulled out a microphone you're like dude here now really are you kidding me i'm at gen con yeah. you're trying to do a ted talk on me right now jeez you need ted talk all over me god you can't just walk up to somebody and ted talk all no, over no you can't if your name is ted you do have to legally change it ted from nerdarchy though i did meet him he's really he's cool he wore uh leather armor with okay. the nerdarchy logo on it it was dope yeah quick question is ted short for tedward yeah okay so go ahead. It's short uh, for Tedward. Yeah, Nerdarchy. That's actually really cool. Leather mm -hmm. armor. And um and the and uh Lauren, who's ex Miss Ginger Ninja, and um, Michael, who's mm. Unmade Gaming, and it was a lot of fun. We got to play on stage, and there was there were some people who who came to that, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I played Keith. Uh, Keith was the uh, enchantment wizard oh, with yeah. um, with uh, thunderclap, which he used his dummy thick thighs to cast a thunderclap, and he would just wham them together, and that would uh, create a shockwave. Sounds really juicy. Um, he was really slow though because he was really fat, so he actually had to cast grease on the ground and slip and slide on it in order to move quicker. Um, that was the first thing I did actually. Is I there was a portal that we had to jump into, and to get into it quickly, I slip and slid in sled slip and sled slip and sled into it. Um, so yeah, that's really awesome. It was, it was really fun. And then, um, I got to spend some time with Davy Chappie. That was cool. Shout out to that dude. He Shout seems like guy. a really cool guy. Yeah, he's awesome. Um, and 
<laughs> that was really it. I only got to play D and D once, and that was because I didn't really sign up for anything because I didn't really know what I was doing. But now I know what I'm doing, and when I go next year, I'm going to sign up for a ton of stuff. I'm really excited. So I, I would then assume that it didn't exactly meet your expectations, but you still had fun. I didn't really have any expectations. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. You did um, say I that. I didn't know I guess. what to expect, which is why I was so nervous about it. Mm -hmm. So, but it was it was incredibly enjoyable. So. I guess it exceeded my non-expectations. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I, I figured there would be more like, uh, is boards the right word? Where there's like panels. There's lots of panels. Hmm. Guy did about two or three panels. Cody oh. did a panel. Um, there, uh, Lots of people do panels. And I would have loved to go to more of them because they were really, really, yeah. really cool. Yeah, seems interesting. It was really, really fun. So I, I now that I know what I'm doing, so when I go next year, I'm going to be involved a lot more. Mm -hmm. This year I wasn't very involved. I was just kind of like, oh, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. Oh, and to answer the question from last week, yeah, there were a fuck ton of people who recognized me. Okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome. There's three different kinds of people. Oh, um, I was right. There are three. There's three. Well, number one is uh, is uh, walking by, hey, I like your videos. Oh, thanks. That's the best one. Yeah. My favorite is the last one because okay. I'm, I'm conceited, but I'll get to it. Uh, the second one, which is the weirdest one, is... Hey, I'll suck your dick. Oh. You have yep. a YouTube channel? Me? You have a YouTube channel. Uh, I love your videos. Do I know you? Anyways, that's all I wanted to say. Are you sure? Away. So what? Is that, is that shit? <laughs> is that shit. is that like a brown booger? <laughs> <laughs> no, there were a couple of people who would just come up and just be like, "You have a YouTube channel," and I'm like, "Yeah," and then they wouldn't know what to say next, and it's like, mm -hmm. I figured something like that would happen. Uh... <laughs> Wait, hey, hey, are you that guy from? Um... I am that guy. Oh. And then they just Whoa. wait around. It was weird. That's, okay, that's anyways. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> they just make that noise. <laughs> um, the, third, the third type of person, also. which I didn't think existed. Uh, you can't see that at all. Oh, there. it's slowly. That was a beautiful oh, There you go. <laughs> that was second. gorgeous. It's a frog on a balloon? It's a frog with a, tied to a balloon just floating. That's awesome. It used to be like a pug in a t-shirt. But yeah. Uh, your phone backgrounds are always me joy yeah really funny. me too i try to keep them the third type of person which i didn't expect and i say it's my favorite not because i'm trying to be an asshole but because it really really humbled and made me really happy that these yeah. people exist because i didn't think they would there'd be people who would legitimately come up to me and they'd be like oh my god <laughs> You're XP to level three. Hmm. I love everything you do. And I'm like, why are you freaking out? Hmm. I just do YouTube. And they're like, can I get a picture? Like, ah. Uh, and I was like, what the fuck? Like, this hmm. is crazy. And th there were there were like, there was this one dude who like made my whole week. And he he was dressed as Miles Morales. And he looked exactly oh, that's like really Miles cool. Morales. And he walked up. Was it Riley really Richie? Like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think he was at uh, Gen Con. He actually just dressed up as Miles and no one knew it was him. That's great. He's the uh, Grey Worm, I think. From what? Game of Thrones. Was yeah. he really there? Uh, he was at Gen. He was at Gen Con. Rayleigh Richie. Am I from... am I saying Gen? Gen Con. No, fucking one of the Comic -Con? cons. Not not Gen Con. Comic Con. I bet he went wow. to Comic Con because of Game of Thrones. Just had a brain skip there. It's yeah, okay. he, he went. He went to one of them and he was dressed up as Miles. It was cool. That's I'm cool. sorry. Go ahead. No, it's cool. He, the came, story. he came up and he was so. I was just watching, walking through the Magic the Gathering area because we okay. had to get to somewhere fast and I had to cut through what, there. What, what's that place like? Uh, massive. Oh, just a bunch of fucking people at tables. Uh, every, okay. So the convention is split into like a bunch of different areas. Like one area is people playing games. It's a massive room, people playing games. Yeah. And then another massive room, which is all the stores, all the people who come down and they you can buy stuff. Okay, cool. And so I had to walk through the Magic the Gathering area to get to one place. And he, he like stopped in the middle of his game, came over. Hmm. I think he was. I don't know. And he was just like... Dude, I'm like starstruck right now. I love you. Can I get a picture? Can you take a picture? And I was, and he was just like, keep doing what you're doing. I love everything That's you really make. Cool. You're really awesome. Thank you so much. And I'm like, I was just, I was blown away because I didn't think people like that, like thought of yeah. me that way. I was like, That's crazy. And then I just sat there and had like a moment where I'm like, Okay, maybe people look up to me. That's weird. Mm -hmm. Anyways, whole thing, um, that that was really, it was really, really awesome to meet a lot of fans. And it, it was, it was great. So I love cool. all of you. You guys are really nice. Um, also, sometimes you guys are really weird. Of course, yeah. <laughs> they watch YouTube. <laughs> that's true, that's true. So, anyways, enough about me. Let's talk about you. That was probably super gross, but... It might have been. It was like a... I had a blueberry muffin from Starbucks. Mm. Coffee doesn't sit super well with me, and I should probably have some more, but... 
my tum tum hurts because I'm dying slowly. I feel that. Shout out, you got you, your tum tum hurts, mm. and you think you're gonna die. Shout out to Pepto Bismuth. It says, uh, "Hey, I think I'm gonna die. Try some Pepto Bismol. <laughs> At least it'll taste uh, kind of weird, but kind of good." Uh, all right, sorry. No, you're cool. So, um, yeah, I have been reading books recently. Oh, reading? Yeah, I, I got like a little bit, not so much depressed, but like I was in a hole where there was a part of my day where I just didn't do anything. I was like, okay, I'm exhausted from work. I don't have any friends that I can like talk to really quickly and just like get into something because everyone I know is busy. Oh, yeah, I'm busy. So, excuse I'll me. I'll like, I'm here. Yeah, well, <laughs> but I'm fucking busy. Yeah, you're so. fucking busy. <laughs> Um, and it, it's, it's like every day or so. So I was like, I need, I need something, some kind of hobby mm -hmm. other than just having a cat who's an asshole. So I went to a used bookstore. I checked out some stuff on Amazon and got a, okay. That was, <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I just knocked over a microphone. <laughs> For no reason. You yeah. just reached out, grabbed it, knocked it over. <laughs> like a baby. Like I was just, I was just, I was just, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I was doing this thing. I <laughs> just break it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, but I learned something from all like young adult fantasy books. They all have a constant. What's this constant? Every single one of them starts out with an extremely relatable character. Generally, they're actually from our world. Like they live as a young adult would, would live. Huh. So there's like that relatability. And then they throw that character into an unfamiliar scene like Alice in Wonderland. It's that common story arc of the adventure and then it kicks into another story arc, and then you resolve the whole conflict. You think they do that just so people can feel like they're in the book? They do it for two reasons. That's the main one, I would feel. Like, that's just one of the easiest tropes to get into before you actually start telling your story. It's okay. almost like a bullet point or a criteria. But it also really helps when you're trying to explain the world that you've made to the reader. Because mm -hmm. you have this character that's never been here, never seen anything in this area before, and then suddenly they like have to go around and walk in it. So they're going to look at the stuff that we would normally look at when we're actually in that world. That's cool. So, so it, 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 it completely gives you the perspective, hey buddy, what's up? Yeah. So you, as the reader, are even closer to kind of beginning this story. Because That's cool because yeah, it's a natural like way to experience it because it's yeah. like you, the reader doesn't know, so therefore the character won't oh, know. You, know, it, <laughs> you gonna drink my coffee, Smooth, man? He, he likes straws. There's sixes um, on the table for those yeah, who are no, watching they, the video they, right they now. Could, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi. Shoot. Oh, no. Don't bump the microphone, you butt face. <laughs> All right, buddy. You're coming down. He's like, meh. Lost my train of thought there for just a second. Uh, you were talking about um, yeah, it, relatable to mm -hmm. the reader. So, like, you don't know these characters, but imagine if they introduced someone who was already established in the world. Mm -hmm. Like, even with characters like Bilbo Baggins or Frodo, they're still, they live normal ass, basic ass halfling lives. Yeah. Like that is the trope of them is they live like really closed in humans. And then they're launched into a world with crazy ass trials, tribulations, adventures and shit. And they have to deal with it for the first time. But if this is like the second time, then as a writer, you're not going to explain places they've already been to. So this is exactly what I was talking about last week. Okay. And I love that. And that's what I like to do with my characters. Yeah, and we were talking about like like basic characters aren't as uh, can be just as cool as a re as absolutely a, as yeah. just a complicated character. I enjoy making basic characters mm -hmm. because I want to experience the world and not have half of the world in my character already. Yeah, you know, already be established. Right, and I I get some people enjoy that, but it's totally a thing where it's like I'm gonna make a basic little baby, and then the world will happen to them, and yeah, then it'll change them. Um, that's what we did with Ket. Was um, I was like, all right, I'm my guy's this, and he's this, and you're like, okay, so being a warlock, this would have happened to you. Also, if you want to play a tiefling, you'd be an aversion, mm -hmm. which means this is perfect. This would have happened to you. That's it. And it's like, okay, I've had this one experience. Yeah. That's his character, and then the rest of Ket is built off of what we play. I feel like Ket is actually, from a storyteller's or a story writer's perspective, a really good character arc. Oh, thanks. Because it. <laughs> It starts out with him, he has a normal life in a small, like a closed-in area, yeah. just like his hometown, and he's a bit of a riffraff, so he has that skill set already of like, I know how to deal with bad shit when it comes to me, because I make it come to me, mm -hmm. uh, and then something outside of his uh, control 
changed his life forever. Exactly. And that's the general starting point for a lot of good characters. I like, uh, yeah, and that's why I like him so much is mm -hmm. that, especially you, we gave him a really good story yeah. for the game, and it, it just felt very natural and really. He's just stepping all over that table right now and is giving me 10 anxieties. All right, I'm going to. So he did this thing. <laughs> we we have we have this uh, spray bottle. It's I'll just got him. water in it. Yeah. You were just like spray. So so I br I brought it out. Yeah. He just he <laughs> punched it. He like he looked it. furious when I brought it close to him. He wasn't like, "Don't spray that or I'll run." He was like, "I will kill you He's and like, that." Do bottle. it, you yeah. fucking pussy. You <laughs> pussy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like that little vine of the little kid that's just running up to his mom like furious, and he's like, "I will hit you." <laughs> Yeah. Just don't don't test point. me. Yeah, he, just like that. And then I spritzed him a tiny bit, and he left off like a little pussy. A little bitch. <laughs> bitch what, what, a, what a little what a little what a little loser. I love that we both have equal amount of frame, but I'm fat, so I take up more of it. And you just have so much room on your side. I'm a little taller though. <laughs> yeah. We we look we're we're disproportionate for sure. It doesn't look like it when we're sitting though. Sit, sit up. Sit up. Yeah. Okay, there we go. That's, For those of you that don't know, head. I am 5'7", hmm. and Logan is 7 feet tall. Yeah, <laughs> I'm 7 feet tall. Uh, don't look it up. <laughs> you actually are like, what, 6'5"? 6'4 six uh, six or 6'5", six six five. Five. I don't know. So when we stand next to each other, which you can see sometimes in the videos, Logan hmm. is just so much taller than I Whenever am. Whenever I stand really close to a person, I intimidate them, even though I'm a little bitch. Mm -hmm. It's... Honestly, a lot of skinny white guys are very scary when you stand next to them. But when you see them at like 60 feet away, you're like, I want to kick that guy's ass. <laughs> they get up to you and you're like, oh, God. And then yeah. they're like, do you have a YouTube channel? <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Dude, dude. Ah! <laughs> scary old YouTubers, man. Yep. So. Mm hmm. Oh, really? I totally thought you had something that was actually super disappointing. <laughs> um, all right, I'll, I'll give you time to think of somewhere, somewhere to move, a bit of a segue. All right. Improv's always fun, too, but I'm going to tell a little uh, Logan's childhood story. Oh, I like Logan's mm -hmm. childhood stories. Uh, I'll, TM. I'll start with your half first, because uh, when we got to know each other, I lived with my mom in my great-grandma's house. Oh, God. Uh, and we didn't have a downstairs exactly. There was a two steps down because it was built elevated because obviously the barren wasteland we live in is at risk for floods. So it was built on like a little elevation and the garage was like two steps down. Uh, the only flood we could ever have here was, it would, would be, it be rain. It would be from God as God just he went, smites us again. There's nothing nearby. No, nothing at all other than like... There's that lake. We're in a valley, so that's about it, but whatever. So uh, my great-grandpa remodeled this garage to be like an office space. So that's where my room was because my brother lived with my mom for a little while. Then he moved out of there. Then I moved in because it was like during a very lengthy divorce, probably a record-breaking length of like three years where they were just – because w their lawyers were very incompetent. One – Doesn't beat Colton, man. Oh. Colton's nice. parents, like, are still in that. Ooh. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, one of the lawyers was like, I need every detail all the time, and also I'm not going to get back to you. And the other one was like, wait, I have to work? So it was just a really bad combo. Oh, um, but I was there, and I had this this neat little area that really is a, a, a warm spot in my heart and in Jacob's heart because I, I was just... It's it's shit, but it's yeah. like, it's good memories because we were in high school and it was like, oh, this is where we played mm. video games. It was like a poor ass little shitty hole in the ground where there was this gigantic, beautiful, ornate wooden desk that will never leave that room ever. Oh my God, I remember that gigantic yeah. desk. The whole thing was like a bread box. You could pull the, this thing over you it. You would put, like, you had a giant, yeah. like, thing, like a, like a. It was just a big drawer. A drawer, thank you. <laughs> 
Uh, and you just put like sodas in. Yeah, I just I just had uh, a lot of root beer, <laughs> and it was all room temperature. And Dr Pepper, I remember that. Yeah, we did we did push into Dr Pepper, but we would just like fucking play Oblivion and a cool lot of kids, Halo. It's like we had weed and we had beer. We were like we had root beer, we played Oblivion and we and had Minecraft. Pringles. <laughs> yeah, but it, it gets a lot sadder after that because my brother was like, hey. I want to move back in because dad is making me do chores. <laughs> so this was his old room when he lived there. He didn't live there very long and neither had I. So for some reason, I was pushed out of that room. My sister had the other room. So here's the resolution that we came to. I don't remember how because I was young and very stupid and uh, exceptionally autistic. I still am. But Except somehow... Exceptionally <laughs> At, at the end of all this, I ended up living in a camper in the front yard for a month of my life. That's around 30 days. I remember that. And I, I had this extension cord that I took all the way out and, like, opened the window to the camper to, like, like a motorhome. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a shitty computer, and I remember whittling away days playing the only thing on my computer that didn't have, um, it, it didn't need internet, and that was the powder tool. What? I played the powder tool. What's the powder tool? It, it's, it's like a chemistry game where you can, like, draw a line of this uh, element and then, like, drop another element on it, and it would be this huge explosion. You could, like, mix and meld stuff and make little scenes. All right. It was really fun. It, it's a pretty cool thing that, like, people did for a brief moment of time. I think I also had Pokemon, okay. and I just watched like a kids show that was uh. Was was this during the summer? No, I'm pretty sure it was. I don't remember. Was well, like you don't have AC in that thing, did you? No. So I was gonna be like, did, was it just hot all the time? Uh, probably. I don't know. It it was a miserable point, so you're I'm like going 15, to assume. So you're just like I'm indestructible. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah. Just my body uh cannot falter, and now I'm getting old and dying. I at understand 22. when old people say that old people hmm. when older people were like oh teenagers think they're indestructible i now they look were. back and remember when i was a teenager I was like i could just not do anything and be fine yeah. i could have been hit by a car like, yeah. mm -hmm. Whatever. Eh, well that sucked <laughs> <laughs> that sucked yeah i was just, I was just out there <laughs> well my brother had my room just in a camper that's my story what what have you been eventually, cooking up eventually your brother did leave right after a little while yeah he was and like, then you can have your room back mm -hmm. So I moved Such back, an and I built a wall of empty Pringle cans. It was an ornate uh, little... If some of you... He, he, Logan's brother has played a few times on Arcane Arcade. Mm -hmm. You go down to when you guys did Jack and Daxter and a few one-shots. Uh, I think those Col aren't public Colston, anymore. Colston, who is, you know... Mm -hmm. he's, he's Colston. He's Colston. So what have you been cooking on? Well, I don't know what I've been cooking on. Okay, so I'm just going to just talk about what I'm looking at right now. Okay. I just got a bunch of Dwarven Forge. Yes, you did. And du it is so freaking cool. It Not seems sponsored very cool. at all. But please, please, I would love... Oh, so you buy this stuff. Yeah, I buy okay. that shit. <laughs> I don't get that for I, I, it, Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's definitely worth whatever you put into it. It is hella expensive, but it is Maybe. so freaking well, cool. I'm a cheap-ass bitch. In case you guys don't know what Dwarven Forge is, uh, this is not an advertisement for them at all. I just really like them. They It is a, it is a 3D terrain uh, like builder that you can make for your d, &D. I think this is an ad. It's just not sponsored. Yeah. Is, that, is that how that works? No, it's not works? paid, so it's not necessarily an advertisement. Oh, okay. I'm just talking about it. I don't know how it works. <clears throat> But yeah, uh, and they're really cool. And I got a bunch of it the other day, and I got little magnet sheets to yeah. put them on. They're really fun to build. It's like adult Legos. They seem super so awesome. So much fun. I yeah. I cleaned out the stream area and made a bunch of cute little sets around the room just so I could throw away the box that all the Dwarven Forge was in. And then Jacob bought twice as much and tore apart all my displays. I had to make a new one. <laughs> yeah, you did. Even though we have a fucking TV now, <laughs> so there's a, it's 3D, man. Uh, I I, cool. I get it. It's it's cool and it's fun. The TV is cool sometimes too, but the TV can be like kind of limiting. Yeah, of like, course. Like both they both have limits. I've I have still not found the perfect way to run it because just, ca just combat, just maps in D and D there's bajillions of mm -hmm. tools to do to like grid maps. Yeah. 
I would have really liked to have been a Every, part of a project. I think Dios was Deos, it. Yeah, Deos. that was cool. I, I, that's for actual maps, like, like map maps. No, they, they could do like combat boards and stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. I have to check that out. I heard it was really awesome. <laughs> Anyways, um, if you just run through all the basics, everybody uses a different version of what you want to, what you want to use. Yeah. So, it's so more, far I have found that Dwarven Forge is kind of like the perfect one for me be okay. because, uh, it. Well, let me backtrack a bit. Let me just of stop course. in the middle of that sentence Please do. and go back. Your your go to is like theater of the mind, mm -hmm. but there are problems with theater of the mind. Yeah. As in, hey, what floor are we on? Uh, hey, which way do the stairs go? Like we've done this before. Remember yeah. when you played Curse of Stride? We were in Argon Vostold, and you're just like, I have no idea where we there's are. There's the there's a distance issue, and also if you're going to describe everything that a map has on it. That would take you a really long time. Mm -hmm. And then every time someone moves in combat, you would have to re-describe, okay, he is now 15 feet away from you, 30 feet away. You have to keep all that. So ma and maps are very helpful. That most people enjoy theater of the mind because it's, yeah. it's simple. But the problem with it is that if you want to do something complex, you can't because it just confuses everybody. A little bit, yeah. So if you want to do something a little bit more complex and you want to do something that's more uh, in-depth, a lot of options that the DM doesn't just have to keep in their head the whole time okay. or on a piece of paper... You could do a map, and the maps in like the pre-written adventures you can draw out on like a grid. But the problem with the grid is that first of all you have to draw them out, mm -hmm. and then second of all, uh, drawing them out can lose some detail. Yeah. And s second if, of all, if you're not really good at it and have a lot of time, it's not going to look that well, great. In the middle of the game, if you want to do like fog of war, you have to go over and draw more of it, or yeah. you put down pieces of paper, and maybe the piece of paper smudges it a little bit. But then they might not go into that room, and you're like, wait, what was there again? Mm. Um, and then it also doesn't look very accurate. It's just lines. Yeah. That's all it is. So you could print out the maps that the that the game gives you, but then mm. you're having to go print out giant pieces of paper that are not easily That's accessible. That's a little expensive, yeah. Okay, so then you could do what the, the one of my other uh, options that I, I used to do a lot was easel pad, which is what Matthew Mercer used to do. It's just a bunch of paper that are grids that you would draw out. I still have those. The problem with that one is that while you can do it ahead of time and then you can whip them out as soon as you put them down, mm -hmm. they are hard to connect. So if you want to have a big dungeon, oh, yeah. putting them together is difficult. Mm -hmm. You have to like remove this paper and put this paper down and then cover that up cover and then the make sure floor. they. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's a hassle still. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we move on beyond that. Now we got a TV table. Now this shit's cool because TV table is awesome because it's I don't have to draw anything. Yeah. If I want a map from a pre-written, I just drop it on the TV, and then if I want to uh, make a dungeon, I just move the map along, and I can have yeah. the biggest thing, whatever. Yeah, that's kind of helpful. The problem with that is that there's no fog of war now. They just see everything. What you could do is uh, instead of making it proportional to where five foot is five squares, so if it's a mini. Zoom way the fuck in. Mm -hmm. Just have our minis be like one fifth of the of the grid. What if you but have, have the room, room be the right that size. is uh, disproportional, and then they're like, okay, I want to see what's on the other side of the room. Okay, yeah, then no, you have would, to move yeah. the whole TV. And then, like, if you have two people on either ends of the room during combat, right? Okay, so you'd have to zoom well, out a bit. There's I no know, easy. I'm pretty sure there are programs out there that let you do that. I have not found it. There is one I have found, and it is the one with Dynamic Dungeons. Dynamic Dungeons does the Patreon where they make the animated maps, which are really cool. And he does modular, he or she, I don't know, they use um, modular uh, dungeon bits where you can, like, make them move. They have a whole program where you can, like, make your own dungeon, but it's limited. Yeah. Now, you could put a map in there and have Fog of War, but you have to fit it into the little squares that they give you, mm. and it's just a hassle. It's so annoying, and I've never got it to work. So that's a problem. Yeah. Now here at Dwarven Forge kind of fixes everything for me, except there's still a problem with it. Yeah. First of all, it's it looks beautiful. It does. They're, it looks they're amazing. amazing. They are really fun to like move your minis around and they're great for combat because the players can just see exactly what it looks like. You can do fog of war by just covering up the parts they can't see it. I use books. I just put a yeah. book on top of it and they make them all level. So you can just put it on top. They mm -hmm. can't see it. Um, uh, that's the and so I love it. It's great, and I can make whatever I want. I can build it. I can yeah, make it modular. I can make a dungeon. Well, yeah. There's two problems with Dungeon Forge, though. It's expensive as hell, mm -hmm. absolutely expensive, and uh, and uh, I mean, there's only so much you can make with it. That, yeah, that's fair. Unless you have a gigantic table, uh, you can only make a little Sorry, room. That's so cat ass. Dwarven we're gonna Forge get, <laughs> get demonetized for cat butt for nudity. <laughs> um. 
Dwarven Forge so far is my favorite because I can make a little combat map that uh, works and can have a little bit of fog of war mm -hmm. and um, can also look really cool. Um, my only other, and I love the 3D-ness of it, so it's like it, it stands and it looks nice and all that stuff. My, my fix would be someone out there make a program that lets me use fog of war on a JPEG. <laughs> That's it. And that would really fix a lot of, I, a lot of uh, issues. I'm not sure if Dungeon of Fog does that, but given their name, they're the guys who made Project Dios mm. or whatever. Uh, so they might do it. You could also just ask World Anvil to eventually imp uh, That would be cool if they implemented implica that. Implement one. Now I know there is a way to do it. Two ways, but it's a weird way to go about it. I believe you can do it with roll 20. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, and maybe I have to look it up. No, I'm just stupid. Um, but that's the other option is like Fantasy Grounds. Um, Fantasy Grounds is so far probably um, next to Dwarven Forge, one of my favorite ways to do maps as well, because mm -hmm. you could use the minis on the JPEG as well. So you can just move them around. They can drag and drop their attacks oh, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Like it's really cool, but it's a completely different way to play. It's kind of hard to manage too. It's not hard to manage at all. Well, I, I'm stupid. It's really nice. Cool. Yeah. Anyways, that's my map rant. Nice. Uh huh. What do you like to use? For maps? For just combat maps, dungeons in I, general. I would still say combat's one of, one of my weaknesses, just because, um, like the, the pacing of it all, and just constantly doing different descriptions. I guess the descriptions are more fun. Okay. I'm not good at sound effects though. You do a lot of sound effects. I don't. <laughs> so it makes it a bit more interesting. Uh, I'm also really bad at doing music. Like I can't, oh, really? I can't manage that very well. Mm. Uh, but I personally, I think, still prefer theater of the mind. I just have trouble with uh, when people ask like distances and stuff. Because I'm sure if you go back and like question all the distances between characters when I'm describing it, it's probably not very accurate. They're like teleporting around or whatever. But that, that's, that's the nice that's part what I about prefer. theater of the mind is that nobody else is paying attention either. Yeah, it's nice. so it's like the as long DM as you're is confident. the only one who's like keeping yeah. track of it. If you're confident and fast with your answers, yeah, I feel exactly. Like it'll go. Um, I yeah, I, I love using music. I hmm. love combat <laughs> we're like opposite yeah. combat's like one of the one of my favorite parts of the game hmm. i love doing combat i love playing combat and i love dming combat um because it just it's i don't know it's structured and it's it, it allows for some room to do role playing but also a little bit of everything um and yeah so, that's fair yeah i i just really enjoy it and i only do sound effects because that's just how my brain does it you yeah. know like when you play with legos and you're a kid and you're like Nyeh. well okay uh can i bring up you're like super young uh, channel. Oh boy, yeah. Because that's probably go for it. There, well, I, I kind of want the only thing I know. There was a really you showed it to me when we were younger, and there was a really funny bit in one of the videos. Um, I think it was like a uh, what's the Zelda where you're on a boat? <laughs> Forgetting the name. Uh, Wind, Wind Waker. Waker. Wind Waker. It, it was like a joke where you ran out of health potions, and then it cut to you. Just a little rosy cheek kid drinking a red cup of Kool Aid, and you're like, "Oops!" And then it just cuts right back. And the comedic timing for it was genius. I don't think it was intentional. It was really good. But you did like a bunch of Lego stop motion shit. Uh, yeah. The first thing I ever did was Lego stop motion with um when I was just a little kid, and I made those, and those were fun. Um, and then the first YouTube channel I ever made was two channels. One of them was a so, Zelda abridged. So, okay, there was a oh. surgeons back in the day of abridged channels. Um, back in the that's early really YouTube good days. shit. That's yeah. kind of what like I do. Dragon Ball abridged and Yu Gi Oh abridged, and um, it is kind of. But they would take animes and they would just make fun. Well, of yeah, they, they so, would. They would take actual stories. So there were a bunch of channels that did Legend of Zelda, and they still exist. Actually, I looked them up a while ago. Hmm. Um, he's gonna break that green screen. No, he's he's not gonna break it. But continue. Anyways. Um, uh, and there were a bunch of, like, they would, like, go through the game and make fun of it as they go, and there were a lot of other channels, and I was, like, 12, and I was like, I'm gonna make one! Mm -hmm. And it was so fucking bad. <laughs> uh, and uh, just, to, just to give you an idea of how bad it was, there were some people that would do it, and they would make, like, little intros for their for their series, and their intros would be, like... Um, Everyone does that. Yeah, and the intro to their, to their, uh, their thing would have, like, a song... And all that, and like uh, yeah. a little music video, like uh, ABGN. Yeah, and they would, and they would sometimes pick like mainstream songs because back in the day, YouTube oh, yeah. didn't care, mm -hmm. and it didn't if matter. If it was like a cover or adaptive so, work, for whatever reason, 
I th they were using like clever anime like whatever songs that were like oh, yeah. fitting for the for the thing. What, you for tried whatever reason, that? my my I, my thought process behind it was like, oh, they were just using random songs that they liked. So all of mine had like Linkin Park. That's right. Twelve year old Jacob starting out a sh piece of shit abridged the Legend I of Zelda. So hard. And got so far. I didn't even use that one. Oh, nice. Because that was the bad song. Okay. Yeah, and I didn't really so like it. So you were woke. Um, yeah, woke as All hell, right. dude. Um, oh, one of them was Nickelback. Okay, let's move on from that. Yeah, you re you're starting to feel how cringy this was. Right? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry I brought this up. No, you don't have to be sorry. I need to live it. No, I'm sorry for me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Logan. Sorry. What? Sorry. Oh, okay. I'm telling me sorry. You should be. So uh, continue. I'm um, nope. <laughs> oh, all right. Lego stop motion with a uh, good old Nickelback and Lincoln Park. We do have a little bit more uh, video experience actually that uh, has been brought to my memory. Oh yeah. We used to attend church very often. Mm -hmm. uh, this was a, a a Christian as as we were, and I, I would say to some extent. I'm, I'm not going to get any religious or political opinions, but yeah, we used to go to church. Do you still? I'm not going to ask. Sometimes. So we did videos for our <laughs> youth group, um, and they were actually kind of funny, I would say. Some yeah. of them were pretty solid. Yeah. Oh, God. That, that was actually, yeah. that would be my first experience in video making. Oh, we have a really good picture of you and I. Yeah. Uh, where we're that, like interlocking mm -hmm. arms and we're like, yay. It was, it was just, like, informative updates and stuff that they would play. Um, we, okay, so we did, like, youth, and it was, mm -hmm. it was like, a high school youth uh, thing, and we would make... Uh, they would have little videos that they would play before, like, they would do, like, a little service, and we would make little, like, update videos on, like, what was going on throughout the week, but we would make little funny skits with them as well. And one of my favorite ones was when we did... Um, the uh, where we couldn't find Alex, and then we found Alex at the end when he just fell from the sky and oh. <laughs> hit the ground. Nice. And I did like an effect in Sony Vegas, and one. it was really funny. Everybody laughed at That's it, and awesome. I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> I like the one where it was like we Pitch. we kept uh, explaining like different types of updates. Mm -hmm. Got yeah. It. And it was all in different scenes around the church. We were just in really awkward positions. So oh we were like God, yeah. upside down halfway inside the couch and it would just cut to that and we'd be like, so next week, the fitness gram pacer test. <laughs> <laughs> we could just explain shit like that. Yep. But there's this picture where we have both our arms locked and we're like skipping yeah. in unison. And was it you who edited it or someone from the church? I where don't remember. It's just both of us. Locked arms, smiling it was, gleefully. No, 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 no. It, we were filming it, mm -hmm. and it was Colton's sister who took it while we were filming. Oh, so, like, we okay. were filming, doing the shot, yeah. and then she took it on the side. And, like, it was, it's so adorable. We need to find it yeah. and put it in the somewhere. I don't somewhere. know. But it's it's a it's a funny picture. <laughs> um, but they edited it to where we're just both happily skipping off a cliff, like the fool that tarot card. That was so funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> It's really good. It was like a phone ah! background for a while. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wee. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was fun time making videos mm -hmm. back then. Uh, after that, we did like a little bit of like a Skyrim playthrough just because that was topical. It's probably a little offensive now, so I'm not going to give the channel name, but uh, we did that and then we went straight to D&D &D tips. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we got to talk about this. Do we? No, All right. No, 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 no. I'm not gonna. Okay. I'm not gonna link it. I'm not of gonna course, do anything. Yeah. There is a channel out there. Some of you have found it, mm -hmm. where it's an old channel of Logan and I playing games. All right. It was old, and we didn't know what we were doing. Yeah. They're really bad. They're pretty bad. And there's some pretty not good jokes in there. <laughs> I, we can still watch them and laugh. I think you and I can watch them. Uh, yeah. Like, it's probably just us. <laughs> yeah. Ha ha ha. And we're like, remember when that was funny? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We were young. It, they're old videos and they're really bad. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't f destroy us but for that's, those. But that's why we're awesome at editing, editing now. Mm -hmm. Work really cool. There's still cool. a lot of old videos on XP to level three that are bad. Hmm. Like the League of Legends. No, those are funny. Th those are pretty funny. Are pretty I'm funny. really sorry I deleted one. There was there was one. It was like a compilation of me being really tired or a little bit drunk playing League of Legends. It's just a bunch of shit that I said. Some of it was really funny. Some of it was a little cringy. 
Instead of making it unlisted because I didn't know how YouTube worked, I got rid of it when <laughs> we changed the channel. It's not a big deal. Uh, but that was pretty funny. But that was just back when I didn't care. So yeah. it was just we were just making videos. And then I made the D&D one, and everybody was like, oh, I'm watching this. And I'm like, oh. Oh. And that's where it came from there. It was just trial and error, trial and error, trial and error. And then eventually I made a D&D video, and everybody's like, I like this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll just I'll just run through our very strange path of success, just because yeah. that's kind of the topic that we're on. So it started out where we were just trying a couple different things kind of cooperatively. Jacob was uh, doing more of the videos because I didn't quite know how to edit, so I would like ask for lessons, but we'd be busy, so it was hard. I had been editing for since I was like nine. I would oh, I, I would uh, edit those on um, those Lego movies together. I was so. gonna say you were a theater kid. Yeah. Yeah, that's a super important detail of Jacob's that's past. That's why my voice is so loud. Yeah, you can definitely get and stay very loud, sometimes without knowing it. And you know that's theater shit, because mm -hmm. when Jack comes over, he's loud. Yeah, he's, like he's really loud. It's like he's more theater than mm -hmm. I am, so it's like... He really is. Yeah, we have to learn to be on a stage and be like, ha! <laughs> we have a beautiful friend who we love. Shout out to Jack. Love you, Jack. Love you. Um... So, yeah, you did, like, a bunch of kid plays. Because your dad was on, like, the board, wasn't he? Board well, he of Directors got on the board or whatever? Later. We, oh, okay. We started, uh, they, my parents were like, all right, kid, you got to do sports. You got to do something. You have to do something extracurricular. Hmm. So they made me do um, soccer, and I was, like, six, and soccer was not good. No, yeah. Um, because, first of all, I'm not athletic. And neither am I, really. Second of all, um, when I would play soccer... Losing my shoulders because I sleep like this. So I was actually going to. What? <laughs> I was actually going to say your shoulders look really wide. Oh, okay. And then I just realized that that just sounds like I want to have sex with you. Well, that's a good trait, I guess. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I was playing <laughs> soccer as a child, and, <laughs> and when, uh, according to my parents, uh, everybody else would be over here playing soccer, and then I would be over here on the other side, uh, fake playing with lightsabers. That's fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. So Hell they yeah. were like, oh no. Oh, <laughs> have you seen iDub's uh, documentary? I haven't watched it yet. You need to. I know. So good. I know. Um, and so they were like, oh great, he's great. the he's theater a, he's kid. He's an idiot. Yeah, so they put me into theater, and I loved it, and mm -hmm. it was so much fun, and I liked being on stage, and I liked, and I was really good at memorizing lines, and I liked playing characters, and it was just really nice. great. So when I was like nine years old, up until I, in my 20s, I, I did theater hmm. a lot. I would oftentimes be in like two or three shows a year, and it was great, and I loved it. The only creative thing I did was like drawing and character design. You're and really good at drawing. I, I was pretty good. I'd say I was really decent at sketching i had a lot of potential but when it came to like going digital and stuff i had a lot of issues so i gave up in that basement house we just talked about we the, logan had an entire wall oh, of yeah. drawings that he would cut out and put them on and they were so cool they were like inventions that. that you had made oh yeah but i don't know when i was that age i was like this is awesome so I, did. I just thought it was really cool yeah i wanted to be an inventor for a little while um Oh, yeah. And so, yeah, I did theater, and mm -hmm. then you did that stuff. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> and, and, uh, and I had been editing for a long time. I, I, I went from Movie Maker to, to Pinnacle ah. to Sony Vegas. Hell, yeah. And now I'm too stubborn to move anything off of Sony Vegas yeah. because I know it so well. Yeah, <laughs> same thing with me, and you're going to shun me for this, but I still use GIMP for most of my art. How dare you? Just I because, used GIMP for years. Yeah, I, I know it, it's really easy, and there are some things that it lacks. I should probably update it so I can get, like, yeah. GIMP 2.0 or whatever because it has a lot of unique features. I, I didn't switch use. over to Photoshop until, like, two years ago. Yeah. And even then, I'm still learning new stuff about Photoshop. And I took a full class in Photoshop and then just was like, eh. <laughs> I don't want to use it. School sucks. Yeah, I went to college. Ha <laughs> ha. I did too for like yeah. two weeks, and then we played Tesseract for the first time ever, and I never went back. Oh my gosh. <laughs> nice. Tesseract. Like, is... I hate <laughs> school. Yeah, it sucks. Uh, so, anyway, we started with the stupid skits in D&D, &D, and uh, we, we had a couple other ideas just to try and spread the channel because we were like, okay, if we're going to invest in this while we're working, we should probably have like a wider portfolio. Mm hmm. Uh, so some of the ideas were terrible, and they're now either unlisted or gone. And eventually, I remember it was November or October that we went from like 2,000 subs to about 10,000 mm -hmm. in the span of like two weeks. Mm -hmm. It was insane. It was insane. It was like, holy shit, what happened? Nothing so, happened. No, yeah. YouTube it, just blessed us. It was us. so strange. It was just like, 
I like Googled it and looked it up. Like, did did someone higher up like shout us out or what? What, what happened? Nope. I think it was during like the beginning of your. It was your... right after How to Play Rogue. Yeah, Game. How to Play Rogue, the, f- the first. And really then good nothing one. was uploaded for months, mm-hmm. and then the channel just exploded, <laughs> and I was like, oh. Yeah, it it was weird. So we, we were like, oh, that's a thing now. So mm-hmm. we slowly started growing, and at twenty six k, we were like, we're awesome. Yeah. We're up there, man. Yeah. And uh, now numbers just are too confusing for us to understand. But we slowly started building and building. And then, uh, as you guys know, right before we hit 100K, uh, there was that little just kind of it was a disagreement. It wasn't so much an argument. We just uh, had different perspectives or, I guess, creative differences, you could say. Yeah. That, That sounds a lot worse than it is. It was really just like. A time where we were both really stressed and we had different opinions and perspectives, and some of those perspectives were wrong, well, and some of them came from me and were wrong. Com- to be entirely honest, the biggest part about it is that the two of us work differently. Yeah, absolutely. And while we're, we totally have a, a similar idea in creative um, ideas mm-hmm. and, and styles, and especially humor, um, the way the business aspect of how we both wanted to run it were completely different, Mm -hmm. completely different. Um, you, yeah, just the way that we work is, is entirely different. different. So, um, you're a bit more sporadic. I'm a bit more methodical. You're funnier. I'm more informative. And we just disagreed a lot is all it was. Um, and we make fun of it at the beginning of the goodbye Mm -hmm. Logan video where it's just like, where it was just everything that we were arguing about and we just made fun of it. So (laughs) like all all the real problems that we actually had are just parodied in that video. So if you want to watch it, figure out what happened. That's, that's really all that happened. I didn't fire you oh yeah that's i just right. really motivated no, you to make I, another you didn't channel. fire me in the video no i know i didn't yeah so a lot of people think i did a lot mm-hmm. of people think i just went and was just like get off my channel no which you is can, not what happened you can tell exactly how different we are by just looking at our two channels there's a huge contrast mm-hmm. um i told you what if you made your own channel that would be dope and i was afraid to i really didn't want to because i was thinking i i'd never been accepted socially on my own i would always kind of tack on to other people because i'm a really I guess romantic would be the right word. I'm a very supportive person. Like, in a lot of games, in a lot of team games, I play supports, like Mm -hmm. people who help everyone else out. Oh, you're the healer. Yeah, I'm pretty much the healer. So I was like, I can't do this on my own. Are you kidding? And then um, after a while, I was, like, suffering with my job, trying to put out a few videos, trying a few different things, and eventually... After that jump, I got, like, 10K in the first day. You still haven't eaten that picture of me. You said you would. I did? Yeah, it, it was in, like, the group chat for just, just whatever. I forgot what I said I would do. <laughs> well, yeah, that, and this is not to give, to d- uh, to destroy. Oh. Yeah, I know. He's biting me, too. Ouch. And then he licked me. He'll lick you. He's doing both. Yeah. You just hold still, then he'll lick you. All right, cool. This isn't to undermine your success at all, but mm-hmm. a big part of... Of, of why your channel is so successful at the same time is because of that massive boost you got. Of course. As soon as you yeah. started. YouTube loves you. <laughs> I'm very thankful for that. Yeah. yeah and it's 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 great. It's really uh, kick-started everything that you mm-hmm. can do on that channel. And, and now it's good. I really like the position we're in right now where yeah. we can both be our creative differences, mm-hmm. but we can also come together to do our own things. Because as you guys can tell, we are in each other's channels all the time. So... <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> so yeah. Um. <laughs> um, but I, I was gonna say, just bring it back a little bit before that. We were at like fifty, sixty k, maybe. We were near the seventy five k mark when uh, I got a phone call from. I think it was Cody. I think it was Cody. No, it was um, Dave. It was either Cody or Dave. It was one of the two. I got a phone call while I was getting gas, going to a not live game. We were just we were just playing. And uh, they were like, hey, we're going to do this big project that requires a lot of uh, consistent, like, you need a contract. And we want to know who the most popular person on your channel out of the two of you is, because obviously that's the draw we want. Because it, it's it, there's a business angle to Did everything. Did Cody call you about Save or Dice? Is that what that was? That's what I'm getting to, yeah. Oh. It, it was either Cody or Dave. I'm pretty sure it was Cody. I think it was Dave. Because Cody was assembling it. Yeah, but Dave is his business partner. Okay. Uh, might have been Dave then. But they were like, hey, there's this thing. Uh, do you want to be a part of it? We're just going to play a bunch of games live. And I was like, uh, I don't, I'm, uh, because I was afraid. 
is like, what what am I getting myself into? Because yeah. if I sign on for this and it turns out to be more grueling or more confining than I want it to be, it'll be tough to get out of. And I don't want to do that. So I was like, I got cold feet. I was like, maybe I want to do this, but I'm definitely going to try and hand it off to Jacob if he's interested. And I'd say for a, a brief amount of time, just because you got to meet so many people, I was a little bit jealous, just like, oh, I totally could have done that, but I'm not going to be stupid and be like, oh, I could have done this, I could have done that, so I just move forward. Uh, but yeah, so yeah. that that's where all that started. They were like, hey, we're going to do this thing. Do you Does one of you want to be a part of it? It was it was interesting. Yeah, I, and, I, I ended up calling Dave afterwards and talking to him. Yeah. He, he told me everything, and I was like, I totally want to do this. Mm-hmm. And then we did the first season of Saber Dice that I did. That's really cool. It seems like you guys are having a lot of fun. Um, of course, you got to go with that. You're doing great. The The casts on Saber Dice have changed a lot, according to Cody. And hmm. it's just because some things haven't worked out, and they've had certain people that you know they have gotten uh, that have left or they didn't like or things like that. But for as of right now, I think Cody said this is the longest-running one they've had. Oh, that's really cool. I think, I don't know. I might be wrong. It's just a good team. Regardless, we all love playing with each other. It is like, there's, we, we have very little problems with each other and it's really, really great. The cast is awesome and it's a lot of fun. I'm really happy about that. That's cool. Thanks. Yeah. I am not as social, so I probably, it's just better all around that I didn't go for that or try and snag it from Jacob because at the time he definitely was the draw in for the channel. Um, but yeah, everything worked out. Everything's great, guys. And recently, uh, they they do longer sponsors, so I'm hoping to uh, say, hey, after this month, which is sponsored by Ghostfire Gaming. <laughs> the month of August yeah. is sponsored by Ghostfire I got, Gaming. I got reached out by uh, one of YouTube's five sponsors for big channels. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the advertising teams that works with uh, Audible mm-hmm. was like, hey, uh, do you want to start a partnership? I don't, I don't know. Do I want to start a partnership with Audible? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't. Yes. Yeah. That's, yeah. Of that's course. That's insane that's awesome. that you got that. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna try and put my own little twist on it because a lot of people just read their basic script. So it'll be interesting to see with a larger company. A lot of people are just kind of like they read it without any emotion. They're like, yeah, for a 30 day trial, like they're talking to the camera. The words are for the camera. They're not coming from their mind. You can kind of tell sometimes yeah. with ads. Yeah. But I, I'll probably get there. I don't know how long it'll go, but. We'll I'll, tr- I'll try and uh, try and That's be interesting. That's really cool, though, that you did yeah. get that. It's awesome. It's cool. So mm-hmm. different directions, different strokes for different uh, penises. Different strokes for different dicks. Mm. I Hell want yeah. to. How do you like your your dick stroked? With mustard. That's funny. I was gonna say with relish. Really? That's crazy. No, as in like they relish. The stroking. Oh, that's I was just also, clever. It's yeah, it's really clever. I would also just say all the time. So right now I'm very sad. <laughs> <laughs> this is the part when YouTube watches it and goes, nope. Yeah, <laughs> I see that they're talking about penises. Can't do that. Can't do that. It's because the AI doesn't have one and it's jealous. Yeah. The algorithm's like, I wish I had a penis. <laughs> Therefore, I will remove all mentions of penis. All right, so we're gonna decide this right now Kay. because I don't know, and I'm just we're just gonna we're just gonna do this in the moment just to show you guys the creative process I go through. Um, which how to play should I make next? I have the choice between mm-hmm. monk and cleric. I'm gonna do artificer last. Um, That's all you have left. And I'm gonna redo warlock. Okay. Because I don't like my warlock one, huh. and I. I, the jokes are really funny. I mm. hate how I represent the class. Oh, okay. It's yeah. just not accurate. You it's a funny video, but it's it's like not accurate to what it actually is. Okay. And I have I watched it recently. I was like, this is hilarious. I'm so funny. This is <laughs> this is a good video. It is, it is good, but I like it. it's it's not what a warlock is. Mm. So I want to go back and change it. It's also only like five minutes. It's the shortest oh, wow. one. It's like I didn't care huh. when I made it. Anyways, uh, should I do cleric or monk? I'd say a lot of people want monk. They did from the beginning. That's true. I, I'd go with Monk, personally. Okay. Cleric. Just yell at some stunning strike the whole time. Cleric is like, they're the best fucking class. They are. They're awesome. Just, I, mm, Cleric and Druid, I would say, are the best. Barbarian. Oh, you mean, like, powerful? I, diversely powerful. I fell in and love with... And with scaling. I fell in love with Clerics in 5e, especially. I don't know if this was in previous mm-hmm. editions. When I went to the domains, and I saw that there's, like, knowledge. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Um, light, life, 
trickery, trickery which is really cool. I'm like, the really domains cool. are awesome. Yeah. Grave, death, mm -hmm. and then there's arcane. There's like What's magic that from? cleric. It's from the default book. You're a cleric, yeah. and your whole thing is magic. You're like a wizard cleric. That's really that cool. Is so I don't know why. I, huh. Awesome. Yeah, they're really like, awesome. This is freaking cool. I, I, clerics are so awesome. I'd say monk just because yeah, I, I, I think I, the skits are going to be really funny. Yes. Like uh, deflecting missiles. I really want to see whatever skit that is. Dude, I love the one we did in the in the previous one. The the, the wild magic. Shapoopy! Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, and you're like oh, flying. That was good. I watched so it. Yeah, bad, it looks it terrible, like, but it's really funny. We're going to get a grappling hook. <laughs> I love it was that. great. I it's like the that. fucking Windows background too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just didn't matter. That's great. Um, okay, cool. Then I'll do monk because yeah. I hate stunning strike and. Oh you know. yeah, stun, stun. I don't. I stun. I just dislike how it's read. I I'm I love the ability and I think it could be cool if it was fixed. Yeah, it they, they could use a couple restrictions with like monster sizes and stuff. Not, not, no. All hmm. it should just, the only restriction needs to be you can only do it once a turn. It is oh, dumb okay. that you can walk up and go flurry of blows, one, two, three, four, and then all four are stunning strike. Oof. So four yeah. con saves. If they well, fail, if they fail, they're stunned not just for, uh, just until the end of the next turn, for, until the end of the n monk's next turn. For each one, it costs a key, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So I, I'd say that's a solid restriction. But it's only one key. Guys, that uh, was Tim the, ordered uh, some food. Yeah. I'm so upset. Let's just, uh, let's, it's all right. Let's just uh, listen to this food get ordered mm -hmm. and come to the door. Hold on. I'm going to point my... No, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, this is very interesting. Uh, Six has attacked and killed him, which is just wow. insane. Oh, my... Oh. I didn't know a cat could do that. Yeah. So, no. Wow. Um, what was I talking about? I'm, I'm sorry. There's blood that, that was a little gory. Yeah, it's insane. It was really oh, good no, acting no, no. on our part. I don't. I don't know. Monks. Uh, Monks. Yeah, but it's only one key, and you get as many key as your level, I believe. Yeah, um, it's one key per level. So, if you're uh, my players and you're Klaas and Morgan at level twelve, level monk, twelve, everyone's fucking busted. Yes. I, I I would say that for the most part, a lot of classes. There it is. There is a way you can make it difficult. There's a way you of can course, make it. Of course, yeah. So my, my my only frustration is that in most of these combats, which I found a way to alleviate, mm. I'm not mad at the players who do this, and blah, 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 blah. In one of the combats that we were doing, it's like both of them are monks, and they mm. can just walk up and just be like, oh, eight stuns. And yeah. it's like, okay. <laughs> Having two monks makes it a little tough. Two monks, and then all the other classes as well, so it's just one insane. interesting thing I found that's somewhat realistic to real life. There's a minor angle of challenge rating that I have come to actually like. Of challenge rating? Challenge rating. Logan, you like challenge rating now? No, I don't. <laughs> but anything with the low challenge rating is almost never alone. So, oh, yeah. So, like, l l let's picture maybe you're on, like, safari or some shit. An elephant will absolutely kill you, but a small swarm of, like, any... Any of the smaller animals can totally kill you. If there are like, yep. like four scorpions in the area, that's that's really bad. Mm -hmm. So I did that with uh, my patron game. They did mm -hmm. uh, four blue dragon wormlings, and it was actually a really tough fight. Yeah, even though they're blue dragon yeah. wormlings can be pretty deadly. They're pretty fucking deadly. Um, I learned that kind of looking at myconids. <laughs> they are nonviolent, mm -hmm. and they detest it. And all adults have this spore that stuns people for an a for a minute. Oh wow! And a full minute's pretty fucking spooky. That's pretty spooky. Um, do they get a save at the end of each turn? Uh, they have yes, to. they do. They, have they, to. they would okay. have to. But the fact that they just don't want to fight is like the coolest thing. Yeah, they just go mm -hmm. and you just can't talk. Or but move. what they also do is to guard the entrances to their chambers. They have spore servants. Are you making a Mikanid video? Yeah. Awesome. Basically Mikanid is. It's right, cool. uh, decently short. It's going to come out like the same week as basically Vampires, which should be Monday. So I love Vampires. I just, I just bash them completely. Vampires? Yeah. Aw, but <laughs> I, I love Vampires. I, I, I do too. They're just so shitty in real life from any lore. Do you know how to, how to save your house from a vampire in any situation? How? Have a pocket full of sand. 
watched fucking Castlevania, dude. I, I did, and I bring I watched the whole thing. Oh, I you loved did? it. Yeah, oh, it's beautiful. I mean, isn't it awesome? Uh, yeah. Uh, the animation is amazing. Uh, the story has a few weak points. Shut up. <laughs> but overall, I give it like an eight. Story, it, story wise, did, maybe a seven. I loved it. It was amazing. There are a few loose ends that they really wanted to lead into the next one. And they kind of. I felt like the ending to it, spoilers. It happened too fast, which oh. is what I would say. Because. It was supposed to be short. I believe it, it was short, but the reason that it happened too fast is because they had too many arcs. They introduced additional ones when they could have spent that time elaborating more on the central villains and stuff. Yeah. That's my own opinion. It, it, I feel like they were doing their best to balance two things in case they didn't get renewed for a second season. So, and yeah. the possibility of getting renewed for a second season. Yeah. So what they did was, is they did its own self-contained story where spoilers again, go watch Castlevania on Netflix. Yeah, I'm going to spoil it right now. I'm serious. Dracula getting killed in the first season is great because mm -hmm. it is its own contained story within the first season. So in case season two doesn't happen, we get this nice story in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But they set it up for a second season still just in case. So they do a lot yeah. of buildup to possibly pay off later, but they do a lot of payoff in that first season just in case. I really like the ending with uh, Alucard. Oh, so freaking it was, cool. It was a really beautiful scene. just sitting scene. there. Yeah. And, and he just, just, oh, dude, oh, that's, so good. Uh, from the video that I just made about villains, yeah. I feel like that's really, really interesting. And I love that finality to a character arc mm -hmm. because his whole life, essentially, he wanted revenge. He wanted to kind of take on his father and finish his destiny, right. more or less. And then when he finally achieved that, he has the whole castle and no ambition. Right, yeah. His whole life was focused on finishing that, getting that done. Yep. And now he's just left alive when he's dead. I love that because Which I feel like so many characters in media do that. And they just kind of like, they, and, they're trying to achieve this goal and then they achieve it and then they have nothing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, now what? And the risk that they that they run doing that and pursuing that is he could just reignite the entire Dracula storyline right. because he has nothing left. Like, he's been chasing this person, so he's been focused on him. He kind of knows all these, like, how he works, what mm -hmm. he doesn't like about that person. He risks taking those into himself yeah. in order to beat him. Like, fight fire with fire, you become the fire you are fighting. Yeah. Anyways, how does a bag of sand stop a vampire? Yeah, okay. So, um, <laughs> apparently, vampires have crippling OCD. And if you rip open a bag of rice or throw sand on the floor, they literally cannot resist counting every grain. So if you do that outside at night, Dracula himself will be like, hey. oh, one, two, three, and then the sun will come up and you'll have to go home. <laughs> Vampires suck. I mean, Strahd would oh, do that. Oh, God damn it. That's a movie name. Vampires suck? Uh, yeah. No, Strahd wouldn't because that's not in the actual lore of the game, but like running water... It's just running water. It makes them almost like they can't do anything. If you pee on a vampire... That's not running water. It is. That's pee. No, the running water is very specific. Where is that ever detailed? I didn't find it. So I had to look it up because I wanted to do a lot of research because it constantly rains in Barovia. Mm -hmm. So can Straw just not go outside? So I had to look it up. And the majority agreement on most forums is that rain is not running water. Peeing is not water. It's pee. You, in order to en enact the weakness of running water, mm -hmm. you can't just pour a bucket of water on a vampire. It has to come from a natural source or a different source that isn't being used by a person. Hmm. So if a human being or a living Your dick creature is a natural source, though. spits on a vampire, mm -hmm. it doesn't hurt them. Rain doesn't count because it's not running. It's technically falling. And if it runs down the arm, that's not technically running water. So a vampire could just float in the middle of a waterfall. A waterfall is the main reason why is the one that 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 screws it up. Okay. Even though rain is similar, rain doesn't count. But a waterfall or a sink, according to people, a sink or a river or mm -hmm. a waterfall is what hurts the vampire. Because apparently you're supposed to be able to hide away from a vampire by being behind a waterfall. Yeah. That's what it's supposed to be. Also, um... <laughs> <laughs> One interesting thing, I think Strahd is welcome in any house in his domain, he right? He is because he is the land. That's his whole yeah. thing is that he, he is the land. Barovia is his domain. He he doesn't need invitation. Mm. Uh, 
It does specifically say in, in the book, too, which is something that I guess I would fight to a minor extent on that. He has to be welcomed by the resident yes. or any residents, mm -hmm. which means someone who resides there. He resides in uh, Castle Ravenloft and in Barovia, but not in these homesteads. So, then if you want to be that specific with it, nice six. Uh, if you want to be that over? specific with it, the, uh, oh, the microphone. The microphone okay. If you want to be that specific with it, mm -hmm. I would say Strahd, when he took over Barovia, spoilers for Curse of Strahd as well, Jesus. Strahd, when he took over Barovia, when he uh, enacted the Dark Powers, or even when whenever he became a vampire, mm -hmm went everywhere and just made himself the owner and invited mm. himself. Just collect all the deeds. And, and just went boop. And, yeah. Instead of a lich collecting souls, he's like, give me the deeds to your houses. Well, that's so stupid. If, he's, if he owns the place, yeah. it's his residence. Barilvi is his residence. But uh, basically, the main thing that I explain, the one way you can always defeat vampires no matter what, yeah. is going to bed on time. Why? Because they can't be in sunlight and they can't be in your house. True. That's that's the whole thing. Also, uh, if you carry like rosaries, the thorns of a rose, mm -hmm. holy water, garlic, like a hundred thousand different things, vampires can't attack you. Well, the fun, well, the thing about a vampire that's supposed to make them scary is the psychological horror they bring alongside it, which is what they do with Strahd. Mm -hmm. So that's my whole gripe with Jaws. How do you survive Jaws? You don't go in the water because it's a shark. Yeah. But Jaws is still scary because there are people who are trying to kill the shark mm -hmm. because humans are dumb yeah. and the vampire still kills them. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole point behind a vampire. They're really easy to avoid, really yeah. easy to stay away from. But dumbasses keep getting themselves killed and he gets more powerful and powerful. Mm -hmm. So somebody's got to put an end to him. It, unlike a lich who is just constantly going around and just, you know, yeah. gathering souls and is just like a constant threat. In order to challenge a vampire, you do have to risk your own life. Exactly. Same thing with Critical Role as well. Um, in Critical Role, uh, uh, the the Briarwoods are in Campaign One are are the the vampires, and mm. they're they they play a political. That's game. pretty cool. There's a faction. Yeah, they 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 play a they're a family, a political game with one of the characters' family, Percy Tallison, mm -hmm. whose family was like ousted by them, um, and like okay. killed off and took their home. So they're reclaiming their home, hmm. but it's vampires, and it's like that's, that's really awesome. cool. Vampires don't just run around on murder sprees. No, they play a game and they try to beat you. At the game, which is also cool. vampire expansion is very risky to the vampire. Yeah, uh, I, I basically were explaining the, the, some of the core concepts of the video, but um, now you don't have to watch the video. No, yeah, I'm just, just don't, don't watch my video. Just, just totally watch this watch podcast because this will be more popular. <laughs> this is definitely more entertaining. Yeah, is um, <laughs> they have to? It's really weird because vampires are undead, right? Yeah. So th I'll explain uh, two major points, and then we'll run through. Uh, just creating a little environment, and then we'll call it... We'll create an environment. Sounds good. Yeah, just kind of like we did, but we're not going to make a story. Okay. So uh, the first one is the reason that they can't see themselves in mirrors is because they don't have souls, because they're undead. But there's... Is that really why? Yeah. I always thought because mirrors had silver lining, mm -mm. and their the silver hurts them. They're soulless, and they don't have shadows. Well, I like the silver one better. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, so, cool silver too. is That's another cool dangerous too. thing. Yeah. Um, but then why don't zombies not have because zombies well the interesting thing about vampires is they're entirely emotional creatures oh yeah, and they're totally. they're like twisted versions of emotions yeah so someone who was in love once they lose their soul is trying to chase like a, a visualization of what they think love used to be okay which is why they crave blood so much is because they want to be alive again uh, i'm into it yeah it's really cool uh so someone who like uh was like was jealous of someone is extremely or like if they liked a virtue of their friend they mm -hmm. become jealous of it mm -hmm. so they, they just become like twisted people who th are kind of chasing fading memories of what they used to be emotional about okay um so that that's a really cool angle of them and then the other one I is like that. it's the, the thing that doesn't make sense is that they're undead and they drink blood which the drive for drinking blood is a bit strange because their whole origins are really f like folk tales, mm -hmm. so they don't make a lot of sense, and there are a lot of kind of jumpy issues. Um, I'm not even sure if they bloodlet like vampire bats do, where they like break the arteries and then stop them from coagulating, so they can just lap it up. Or if vampires have like 
the the opposite of venomous fangs where they just suck, suck it up. It. Yeah. Uh, I guess it's different. <laughs> Six, buddy, can you not attack my dwarven forge? Yeah, come on, man. That costs a fortune. Um, the the other thing is, in order to make a vampire, you have you can only make a vampire spawn, and you do that yeah. by killing someone by biting them, and then mm -hmm. they're they like wake up, and in order to make a vampire, you have to give them your own blood as the vampire that made them. Which is really cool, but a little weird. Because, like, why do they have blood? How? Making another vampire is supposed to be really difficult, as far as I'm aware. All you do is, they don't want to, because right, they once, don't want to. once you make another vampire, they can challenge you. It's like learning druidic. It's like, uh, you're a necromancer, and you have a family of ten undead servants that do whatever, whatever you want. Yeah. And you want to make one of them another necromancer just so that you're you're more powerful and you have someone to talk to so you raise them with more powerful magic suddenly they're they risk becoming opposition okay so um the way that i would understand how vampires began is like there was this first vampire who's probably based on vlad the impaler or count dracula himself and he went around sucking blood of like young girls and stuff because he was chasing that yeah. that obsessive love then eventually he made his own coven mm -hmm. and they just spread from there so it's kind of it's they're interesting. I like them, but they're very very weak because of all the superstitious ways you can just beat them. Yeah. I I, I think it just matters how you play a vampire. I mm. I don't look at the vampire stat blocks. Oh, oh, I'm so smart. But like I'm not trying to say it like that. No, but I like, understand. I I whenever I do vampires in a game, which I'm not doing too much anymore cuz I overdo them. Yeah, we're, but cuz I love them. I we're, think they're we're so We're around cool. the bend. They're pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, I I do, I think about their effect on the world, what their game, what their gains are going to be. I'm yeah. like a lich where I just kind of look at the stat block and go, yeah, this will be a fun fight. Hmm. Um, okay. But like, um, uh, but like a vampire, I'm like, oh, cool. He can turn into a wolf. Like, mm, that's uh, not No, really... he can't. He can't. They can't turn into wolves. What do you mean? All they can do is turn into a medium sized cloud of vapor or a small bat. That's all they could do. I thought they could turn nope. into a wolf. They can summon swarms of wolves at night. I just oh, they wrote can the script. Summon wolves. Only at night, yeah. All right, I th I knew there was something with wolves. Yeah, no, yeah. That's... See, this goes even more to show how much I don't fucking know because I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't matter to yeah. me how many hit points the vampire has. They're gonna kill him. They're gonna kill him. They would be fucking cooler if they could turn into like wolves and stuff, or like the ugly, disgusting ass Skyrim half vampire creature. Yeah, I, that's. <laughs> I don't even like that shit because I, I that's not I the point really of either. a vampire. The no. point of a vampire is like. It's, it's like it's, the role play. It's and the like, romantic evil. Right. Everyone has like an angle of how they're supposed to be a villain. Mm -hmm. And vampires are always romantic. Yeah. I And I, Curse of Strahd is like my favorite pre-written. And I just, mm -hmm. I absolutely love the story of Strahd and all that stuff. Because he's not even really a vampire. He, <laughs> the Shadowfell granted him a dark curse that he enacted when he drank Sergei's blood. Oh. That gave him the curse and locked him inside oh. of Barovia when his guards killed him. And he's a vampire. And I didn't know like, anything about that. And it's that. like an ancient curse is what he is. You probably should have. I already said spoilers. Sports. Well, yeah. yeah. Anyways, the game's been out <laughs> for a long time, but yeah. That's fair. It's, uh, I, I just, I love it. So I just think it's really interesting. Yeah. So I'm, I will awesome. watch that video. I, I'm excited okay, for cool. that. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's pretty simple. I mostly just kind of make fun of them, analyze their stat block, some of the stuff in different cultures that makes them weaker. Cool. And then at the end, I'm just like, hey, if you really want to run an awesome vampire, I just say, watch Castlevania or read through Curse of Strahd. There you go. Like, yeah. Strahd, in order to remove. What they do to make themselves stronger is they remove any chance of their weaknesses killing them. Mm -hmm. So Strahd blots out the fucking sun. Mm -hmm. He's like, no more of that shit. Bye-bye. Yep. Probably it doesn't allow any garlic seeds to come to Barovia. It's just <laughs> shit like that. Garlic yeah. doesn't, isn't a thing. <laughs> Probably, I'm sure he stays away from all the rivers and passages and stuff. Well, there's barely any rivers, yeah. There's the, just, like the main one and then all the lakes. There's the lakes, yeah, and then there's the mm -hmm. one river with the waterfall. He does stay away from it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's uh, I love it. It's mm -hmm. so cool. He uh, uh, there was another thing that he does too. I can't remember. Uh, I actually. Oh, he's got the um, spoilers again. There is a there is a heart in Castle Ravenloft. Yeah, that he acts as about extra that. hit points. And I wa I, li I watched a guide on how I listened to a guy read. Read, oh, okay. read a guide on how to do Curse of Strahd and make Strahd really scary. Mm -hmm. And when they get the holy symbol of Ravenkind and they finally get sunlight to give yeah. on a Strahd, it just doesn't hurt him because the damage goes to the heart. So he's like, look, the sun doesn't mm -hmm. even hurt me. I'm not a normal vampire. And everyone's like, oh my God, how do I kill him? That's awesome. Even though his stat block is poopy. Yeah, it kind of is. So we're going to make an environment? Yeah. Um, 
I'll start out, and can you, do you want to put a creative edge on something, or do you want to start with the basic environment? Vampire. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's our theme. Um, all right, I'll pick a location then. Okay. That's the only twist I'm going to add to this, is that a vampire has to be incorporated to the environment. Okay. Um, let's go Underdark. Under, ooh, okay. Underdark's pretty cool. Okay. Beach, like beach is always my go-to, but I feel like the Underdark is a nice change of pace. You love crafty and son of a bitch. Anyways. What you, uh, <laughs> I just like the beach. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I like port towns because it's like you have the whole world on one side and the unknown on the other. It's yeah. a perfect beginning to an adventure. Very cool. So the Underdark. What's unique about this particular place of the Underdark? Uh, Make it stand out. It is not natural caverns. It was uh, built by a, um, uh, oh, what's the one of the DMs got? A beholder. A beholder used oh. eye rays to carve this one out. Okay. So that'd be so really weird. Cavern. They can totally levitate. Vampires, right? Um, they can cast the levitate spell. <laughs> Is it at will or do they have spell slots for it? I don't know. But no, they do not have a flying speed. Let's say that our vampire has bracers Levitating. of levitate. Let's just say he can levitate. Yeah. Fuck it. He can fly. I always have yeah. my vampires fly. Of course, yeah. It's cool. It's it's not lame is what it is. No, it's awesome. So it was built by Beholder. Uh what's what's the angle here? I think last time we just added some some drama. Drama? Yeah. So well first let's let's question you said this was made by Beholder. Where is that Beholder now? Um, okay, there was a town nearby. Mm-hmm. And the is this town underdark or overworld? Yeah, it's an underdark. Okay. Uh, let's say it's a it's a town of Duragar. The Duragar okay. um, were uh, it, it caused some faulty. Um, it, it, it shifted the the rock around nearby mm -hmm. and caused a few earthquakes and and like fallen Ooh, rock yeah. in their town. So they got angry and they went to go they went to go kill it. <laughs> All right. And maybe they did. So somehow they killed they killed this um, this unkillable beholder. So let's say. Let's just make it really... In okay, I actually... I have an idea for this. So, one question I want to ask before I present how this how this all went down is, are those Duragar still there? No. Okay. Uh, then the bulk of the Duragar, of course, were incorporated into this battle because mm -hmm. they know this thing is going to kill all of us and ruin our city. Uh, they went in, and they managed to best the traps, mostly by sheer numbers, Kay. So, like, a lot of the traps are disabled, and the few that remain, the vampire avoids because he can levitate. He's a smart-ass motherfucker because he's a vampire. So It's a vampire beholder? No, this vampire that's here now. Like, he doesn't oh, there activate... Oh, he's a vampire here now. Yeah. No, I'm saying in the future. Oh, got it. Okay, yeah. okay. He doesn't activate the traps that the Duragar didn't. Understand. So, they go in, and they're really good at, like, ambush mines. Mm -hmm. So, they sneak in, they say, fuck you, and just barrel straight toward the center chamber. Okay. So they trigger a few traps. It's very inconvenient. They might even cave in, like, one of the areas where a bunch of servants are. Uh, he thinks he prepared for this, but at the time, he's passively dreaming, which is a very, very inconvenient time to be dreaming. Mm -hmm. So at this moment, he creates another beholder. Okay. So right as he wakes up, he's like, something's wrong, looks over, oh, fuck, there's a beholder, and he looks pissed. Oh, fuck, my wall just broke in, and there's a bunch of tiny blue people. And this is just like a war zone. Cool. So this is just like huge ruins, bunch of skeletons, two dead beholders. Got it. In this main cent central chamber. All right. Which also gives us the option of either having the vampire repopulate that town or just own it. Okay. And like the entry to this this All right, so town. the amount of magic and craziness that mm -hmm. happened in that fight, it cre let's say it created somehow a field of anti-magic in the main oh. room. Oh, and let's okay. say the vampire's motivation to coming down here is that he wants to get rid of his vamp vampiric nature. Okay. So the anti-magic is going to help with that. So let, let's let's build this vampire a bit. He needs some sort of a twisted emotional motivation. So his family let's just left say, him because he's a vampire. <laughs> I don't know. Well, let, let's say who who was he before before this? He would have to know how to get into the underdark. He could have even been a drow. He's a he's a he's a dwarf. Okay. He's a dwarf who, who was mining. A mining dwarf. He's a dwarf vampire. <laughs> Is he a Duragar vampire or like an overworld dwarf? No, just a dwarf. Okay. 
Um, so we'll say, no, because he wouldn't want to get rid of his vampirism then. It wouldn't be greed. Uh, oh, okay. So because he's a dwarf, he values like families and clans. Mm -hmm. If you're cursed to be a vampire, we'll not explain that. That's up to you guys if you want to run this, how mm -hmm. he became a vampire. Because partially because we're lazy, but also because open ends are cool. Yep. Um, he wants to get rid of his curse and go back to his family because yes. he's essentially hideously deforming his clan's name. Yes. By being a vampire. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's one of the worst things you could probably do is mm -hmm. just become this source of local evil. Mm -hmm. So they banished him, and he's like, I got to find some way out of this. Yeah. So naturally he digs because that's what he knows, and he find he comes across these ruins. Yes. And he would use this chamber. Uh, because there was a beholder here, there's obviously a lot of magical resources, mm -hmm. like items and stuff. So he would find shit, eventually figure out that, hey, if I took it out of this room, I'm more powerful with it. Yep. So and he sets up a laboratory in there, and he starts getting working on all that kind of stuff, okay. not knowing that the magic is still leaking and moving. It's not stagnant, and it's affecting more things in the Underdark that come to try to stop him. And so he's in this constant battle with other creatures from the Underdark, killing them, turning mm -hmm. them undead accidentally okay. while trying to solve his curse. They leak out into the overworld, these weird, strange, undead creatures from the Underdark, and a party of adventurers okay, has to wait, follow him you, back you down. You said this was like anti-magic there's a field yeah. of anti-magic mm -hmm. so how, how does that leak in it it like mo it like moves so like it, it like travels well anti-magic just negates magic so right. undead wouldn't well who cares it just moves no he's a vampire killing them okay and then when he kills them yeah he turns them undead yeah i, I would say it's partially intentional because he still needs blood blood and also he needs more defenses mm -hmm. yeah so, so he, 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 would, he would do that he's like I'm doing this for now because, as most villains do, the ends justify yeah. the means. The anti-magic moving is affecting other parts of mm -hmm. the Underdark, and they're trying to find the source to put a stop to it. Because maybe it's like, it hit a hospital or a, or a medical okay. bay, and now all our potions don't work anymore. Uh, or uh, or now our wizard, our cleric can't cast spells, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to throw in the other angle of uh, my other video mm -hmm. and say that that old Duragar town now belongs to a, uh, what's it called? a colony of Myconids. There you go. So they're just all chilling there. They probably learned a lot because there's a sovereign in the center. They all just get high as fuck. Some of them have the corpses of the of of. Oh dwarves. yeah. They look like the things from uh, um, uh, Last of Us. Mm -hmm. They'd be like Duragar Last of Us creatures. Yeah. So you would have to enter one of these two regions, and maybe you could get the Myconids to help you get rid of the vampire. Yep. Or maybe you could help the vampire. Yeah. I think that's pretty interesting. That's pretty interesting. If you want to run that, mm -hmm. go for it. Because yeah. we just came up with that right now. Because we're creative people. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. <laughs> um, cool. Well, that was that was fun. Yeah. That was cool. I'm going to go I'm gonna go play Save or Dice because it's Wednesday. Oh, yeah. It's going to be kind of uh, fun. We're so. pretty close to that. And I'm going to edit a bunch nice. and then go bowling. Oh, me too. Nice, dude. You're also going to go bowling? I'm going to go editing. All right, nice. Yeah. It's going to uh, be a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us for yeah. today's episode of Subclass Podcast. And um, wait, i got to get right on it. Where is it? Where What's is up, that? Guys? Where? Where I love you. Where is it? I can't. There Are you it serious? is. All right. That's the end of the podcast. Yeah. The, yeah.